Manuela, what have been the key developments in renal cell carcinoma over the past 12 months? Well, over the last 12 months, there were indeed, um, again, increases in, in treatment options for the patient. A new drug has been approved for second-line treatment. This is axitinib, another VGFR uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor, which uh, has been investigated against sorafenib in patients who had failed one prior uh, treatment. And this uh, studies showed resu the results favoring the use of axitinib versus sorafenib in second line. So this is new because uh, so far we only had uh, the mTOR inhibitor Everolimus to be given for the patient in second line. Now we have another treatment option which is very attractive for the patient. Is it being widely used now? It is in general use. It has been approved on September 3rd and it will be made available in a few weeks uh, across Europe, which is really exciting for our patients. We had already experience with the drug, first within the phase three trial and then with a named patient program. Uh, and in, in Austria, we have already had 35 patients being on this program and having any agent, another agent available in the, within their course of disease. Are there other agents in the pipeline? Well, there are other agents like uh, another, another VGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor um, called uh, Tivosanib, a very interesting agent as well. It's a very strong inhibitor of the VGFR signaling pathway. And interestingly, this agent is very precise in uh, hitting the VGFR signaling. And in contrast, uh, it does not have strong affinity to other tyrosine kinases, which means that we are um, having a very precise activity and actually rather low toxicity. So this is a very interesting agent that also has been investigated in a phase three trial with promising results and is not available yet, but it will be very promising in the future as well. It sounds like these two agents work in a different way. Well, they are actually quite similar uh, from their mode of action. But uh, to really detect differences between those agents, they, from the first side, they all look very similar. And to really see the differences, one has to look at the molecular um, um, results and as well at the, uh, experiment, uh, at the uh, experience in real-world patients. It turns sometimes out that in a real-world patient, uh, agents behave differently than observed in a phase three trial. So we will see in which way these agents are quite similar or less similar. Are there any other agents that you draw our attention to? I would say that those two agents are probably the most important when it comes to novel agents. There are of course other agents uh, focusing on different mode of action or in, uh, having different um, tyrosine kinases that are inhibited, such as dovitinib, which is an agent that uh, focus on, on um, alternative um, pro-angiogenic pathways. Uh, so because we believe that once occur, uh, upon occurrence uh, of resistance to, for example, sunitinib, uh, that other uh, pro-angiogenic pathways may become more relevant. And dovitinib is an agent that exactly focus on these different um, signaling pathways that also drive angiogenesis but not on not on a VGF inhibition basis. It sounds like a lot of research in renal cell carcinoma is coming to fruition at the same time. Is there any particular reason for that? Well, I think the, uh, I think there is a great interest at the moment in the field of kidney cancer and being aware uh, of the molecular background, how this disease occurs uh, and how we, we, each pathway is relevant to, to a, be, a better understanding on, of the relevance of the individual pathways that may drive this disease. I think um, this is the reason why, why many companies try to focus on inhibition of a specific pathway that might be relevant in kidney cancer. It also is a, a, a field of, tu of tumor uh, treatment where uh, actually we don't combine these agents, these novel agents with chemotherapy, so we are using actually only this type of agents, not in combinations like it occurs in, in other types of cancer. Are these improvements clinically meaningful? I think the improvements that we can see in real world patients might be quite bigger than uh, what we see on in, in, in the clinical trial, because in the clinical trial the difference might be sometimes small, one month 
um, more or less between agents in, in comparison. But uh, the benefits that we can see uh, in the real world population is quite huge because uh, once these drugs are available for patients, and this is the case in Austria for example, um, almost all of these drugs are available for the patient, reimbursed. And what we can do, and this is very important, we can re-challenge the patient. Once the patient has progressed on drug A, we can uh, we can offer drug B and once the patient has progressed on drug B, it make, uh, can make sense to re-challenge the patient with drug A. So many treatment lines are available and the patient uh, really benefits in terms of long-term survival. Are there other areas of research that you'd highlight? So a very hot topic at the moment is the area of uh, identifying biomarkers that may um, either be of prognostic relevance or of predictive relevance to, to see uh, right away if a patient is going to have benefit from a treatment or not. One of the most promising biomarkers which is easily available actually turns out more and more to be hypertension. Hypertension uh, was shown to be quite predictive in um, in, in assuming whether a patient would benefit from a VGFR, anti-VGFR uh, targeted agent or not. Uh, it, in several trials it has been shown for sunitinib, it has been shown for axitinib. So if a patient presents with hypertension during the treatment, uh, it appears that this is associated with a better outcome. And we are going in the future really to focus on on a way of implementing this in the cl routine clinical practice, which means we should consider treating to hypertension, which is a co completely new concept. Is it surprising that hypertension would have such an impact? Uh, well, I think when the reason why hypertension is having such an impact on as a biomarker is probably because it's really reflecting how susceptible an uh, individual is to inhibition of a pathway, of, of the VGF pathway. Um, because hypertension occurs through the inhibition of, pa of this pathway. So it probably shows that the patient has the right dose, the right individual dose of the agent.